A very good evening to one and all present up here. Mr. Aisha Mukherjee will like to begin the presentation for our team on the topic of multi-tape Turing machine. Our team comprises of the following members as Mumita Boshak, Dipankar Das, Oyan Roy and myself. Now, in our presentation, we'll discuss these following topics. As to the introduction of the topic, what is a Turing machine, and we'll discuss the formal definition about the Turing machine, different theorems regarding it. And finally, we'll discuss the problems and solution regarding the machine. Now, let's understand as to what is a multi-tape Turing machine. But before understanding that, we need to understand as to what is a Turing machine. As such. A Turing machine basically is a mathematical model which and recognizes the recognizes the language by a type zero grammar. Also, Turing machine is a language. A Turing machine is a mathematical model which basically has the infinite length of tape, which is divided into a number of cells. From which the input is read with the help of head, and the machine also has a state register which stores the state of its machine. Now, how? Now, let's understand as to what is a multi-tape Turing machine. A multi-tape Turing machine, a multi-tape Turing machine is basically a variant of the Turing machine that utilizes several tapes, and each of these tapes has its own head for reading and writing purpose. Now, a k-tape Turing machine basically has k tapes or is k independent tape heads. What does it mean? It means that the machine can read the tapes simultaneously, but has only one tape. As we can see in this figure, there are three tapes: tape one, tape two, tape three. All of them from can be read simultaneously. There is tape one, tape two, and tape three. But it only contains one particular tape, which is stored in the state register. Also, in a multi-tape Turing machine, we need to understand the machine begins with the input in the standard position on tape one. That is always starts from a standard position of tape form, then it goes to tape two, then it goes to tape three. If there are more than three tapes, then it goes to tape four, tape five, respectively. That's what all. That's what all from my side for the basics of Turing machine. Now, Momita Boshak would explain the formal definition about the machine. Thank you, Rishab. Uh, thank you, Rishab. Good evening, sir. Uh, now I will explain formal definition of multi-tape Turing machine. A k-tape Turing machine is m equals to q sigma tau delta q zero q accept q reject, where q is the finite state of control states. Sigma is a finite set of in input symbols. Tau subs is super uh, subset of sigma is the finite set of tape symbol. Also, a blank symbol is T belongs to tau slash sigma. Q zero belongs to Q is the initial state. Q accept belongs to Q is the accept state. Q reject belongs to Q is the reject state. Where Q reject is not equals to Q accept. Delta such that Q slash Q accept Q reject into tau K map onto Q into tau into L R. K is the transition function. Next, next, uh, let's take an example. The transition function of two tape machine is of form sigma, so delta q y x i x two equals to q y y i d i y two d two. Here, q y q j belongs to q are the starting and ending states. X i x two belongs to tau are scanned from tape one and tape two. Y one y two belongs to tau are written to tape one and tape two. D one d two belongs to R L S R direction form for head one and head two. Initial state in the first step single M will remove to the initial initialization phase, which will Write a new left end maker and rewrite the tape in the correct format for the future. Thus, the formal initial state Q dash zero go to the state whose mode is in T. Since we are going to insert a new left end maker, we need to shift all symbols of the input one space to right, which can be accomplished by remembering the next symbol to be written in the state. So. Delta dash Q dash zero A equals to H in T Q zero A star zero L zero up to zero L I B. The symbol zero and L D 
don't mean anything. And the star remembers the, that when we write the next symbol, all hits must be in that position. Next. During each transition, a multi-tape machine may change the state, write potentially different symbol to each step, independently reposition each step head. Next. I will discuss about computation, acceptance and language. A configuration of a multi-tape TM must describe the state, contents of all K tapes that, and position of all K heads. The C belongs to Q into tau star star tau tau star K, where star denotes the head position. Accepting configuration is one where the state is Q accept and starting configuration on input W is Q0 star W star T up to star T. Formal definition of a single state is kept. W is accepted by M. It forms the starting configuration with W as input. M reaches an accepting configuration LM equals to W where W is accepted by M. So that's it. Now I will discuss more about some theorem. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you, Momita. Good evening, sir. Good evening, everyone present here. Myself, Paul Rai. Today I'm going to explain about the uh, proof of theorem that, if, that every multiple tape Turing machine has an equivalent single tape Turing machine. The th expressive power of multi tape Turing machine theorem is. For any k tape Turing machine, M, there is a single tape Turing machine such that L of single tape Turing machine is equivalent to L of multi tape Turing machine. To prove the theorem, we have two challenges. So, what are they? The first challenge is how do we store k steps in one? That means in the in this theorem, we have to prove that a, that k steps will be kept in just only one step. And the second challenge is how do we simul how do we simulate the movement of k independent states? So here we can see in this diagram the above one is a multi tape Turing machine with head of zero and zero, which has uh, two steps, and the below one is a single tape Turing machine which has two which has two steps combined in only one tape. Now coming to the next slide, here are the steps to prove the theorem. Our challenge one is head of single tape Turing machine is pointing to one cell. How do we found all the k symbols that are being read by the k heads, which may be in different cells? So the answer is very simple. Read the tape from left to right, storing the contents of the cell being scanned in the state as we encounter them. Our challenge two is after the scan, single tape Turing machine knows that the next step of k tape Turing machine. How do we then change the contents of contents and move the heads? This is also simple. Once again, scan the tape, change all the relevant contents, move ahead, move heads, and change the state. Now, in the next slide, there is an example of uh, of a multi tape Turing machine. The problem is multi tape Turing machine multiplying two numbers, each represented as a unary string of ones, to get the third. It would be difficult to do with a simple simple Turing machine, but it is fairly straightforward with a three tape Turing machine. Tape, now the left diagram is the tapes before starting to compute and the right portion is the steps after starting the second edition. So here are the two diagrams. Now in the next slide, here is a, a diagram of conversion from multi-tape reading machine to single tape reading machine. M is the multi-tape reading machine and M dash is the single tape reading machine. So what are the steps to convert a multi-tape reading machine? to a single tape Turing machine that will be ex that will be explained in the next slide. So the steps are every multi tape Turing machine has an equivalent single tape Turing machine. If M has K steps, M not sim simulates the effect of K steps by storing the same information on its single tape. Uses a new symbol hash as a delimiter to separate the contents of different tapes. Marks the left, the right end of the relevant portions of the state of the tape. M0 must also keep the track of the locations of the head on each tape. Write a tape, write a tape symbol with a dot above it to make it 
whether the head on that tip would be stuck. Dotted symbols are simply new symbols added to the tape alphabet. If the movement of one tape, one T steps, heads causes M not step head to bump into the either or hash, then that side of the type tape must be moved to make room for a new type cell. This is all about my by me, and the next part will be explained by my friend Dipanita. Thank you, I. Now I'll talk about some question and uh, solution of multiple Turing machine. So, do multiple um, Turing machine exist in real life? Technically, no Turing machine are known to exist in real life because we don't have unbounded amount of tape. However, if you ignore that fact and ignore the people don't actually have computers that have the simple architecture that a Turing machine has. Then we have machine uh, with multiple tape drives and we have machine that we can program to emulate reasonable uh, size finite state automata to manipulate those tape drives. So in that sense, yes, multiple Turing machine exist, but we don't use them quite that way. And why could one use multiple tape Turing machine? The theoretically constructed is interesting for the two reasons. It always asks to uh, investigate question about how having multiple memories increase computational complexity and computational power. It allows us to define lower complexity classes such as log space where you want the space complexity to reflect it how much conditional space on that tape is required to the next phase um, to the input. For this purpose, we usually consider Turing machine with two tape, one read only tape and uh, that has the um, content input and the other is write tape for intermediate and final result. Here the amount of space used in the second tape is the taken uh, as a space requirement of the Turing machine. This has practically relevance for situations where the input is very large and stored on a slow uh, type of storage and we have the additional much faster storage available for the intermediate result. Now we'll talk about some MCQ. Here we see a Turing machine with several tapes is known as multiple Turing machine. Here is the explanation of the question answer. My next question is Quadratically more computational time is needed to stimulate multi-tape Turing machine using single-tape Turing machine. Here is the uh, explanation and my next question is. Oblivious uh, Turing machine is a multi-tape Turing machine. Here are the explanation and next slide. Here we see a multiple Turing machine calculator. Here we um, input first number and second number and we see current state, uh, calculation step and the result. Now we like to conclude our topic. This model initially seems much more powerful than the single tape model. But any multiple tape uh, machine, no matter how many tapes, can be simulated by a single tape machine using only quadratically more computational time. Thus, multiple machine can't uh, calculate any more function than single tape machine. And uh, none of the robust uh, complexity classes are affected by a change between single tape and multi tape Turing machine. These are the references we collect this um, topic. And thank you, sir. Uh, this from our side. Thank you very much. Very good presentation.